So when we're using um, calculus to graph something, uh, keep this guy in mind. We're going to use our first derivative, will tell us where it's increasing and decreasing, and therefore where the maxes and the mins are. So if it's increasing and then decreasing, you've got a max, and then if it goes from decreasing to increasing, it's got a min. So your first derivative finds your equations of the tangent lines, which tells you about the slopes of the curves, which therefore tells you increasing, decreasing, which therefore tells you max and min. Excellent. Then you're going to find your second derivative to tell you about your concavity. So concave up looks like a cup, concave down looks like a frown, and where it changes from concave up to concave down, that's what they call an inflection point. So, awesome. So let's just do this. So we're going to take our first derivative, f prime of x is 12x squared plus 6x minus 6. And I want to know uh, when this guy equals 0, so I'm going to factor this thing. So 6 times 2x plus 1 minus 1x, sorry. 2x squared plus x minus 1, okay. Let's see if I can hold it together. Uh, factor this guy, 2x and an x and a 1 and a 1, that's a 2 plus 2 minus 1. So this thing will equal 0, we see our critical points, it'll equal 0 certainly at the negative 1, and also if you set that equal to 0 at 1 half. So that is where your tangent line is, the derivative is 0. So that's when you have a nice horizontal tangent line. Uh, when the derivative is zero, your tangent line is, your slope of your graph is zero, and therefore your tangent lines are horizontal. And then if you want to, uh, so anywhere before that or after that, it's either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. So if I use my sine line and I plug in any value I want less than negative one into my derivative, I can figure out whether my derivative is positive or negative. So if I plug in any number I want less than negative 1, my teacher always used to do negative a billion or negative infinity or negative some really, really big number. You can plug it into any one of these forms of your derivative, but it's easiest to plug it into the factored form. So if I plug in negative 100 into this, this 6 is positive, so he's not doing anything. 2 times negative 100 is negative 200 minus 1 is still certainly negative. Uh, negative 100 plus 1 is negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. So since our derivative is positive, the slope of our tangent line is positive, and therefore our function is increasing. Awesome. Now plug in your favorite number between negative 1 and, and a half, maybe 0. So 2 times 0, let's get rid of those. 2 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative, uh, 0 plus 1 is positive, a negative times a positive is a negative. So our derivative is negative, so our uh, graph is going down. Uh, if you plug in something bigger than a half, it, it'll end up being positive. You can check it, plug in maybe a hundred into there, positive times positive. And since our function, the derivative is positive, the slopes of our tangent lines are positive and therefore our function is increasing. So therefore we can answer the intervals of increase. So we're uh, increasing from negative infinity to negative one and from x values from one half to infinity. So our intervals, uh, x from negative infinity to negative one, uh, unite that with a half to infinity, and we're decreasing on the interval negative one to one half. So when the x's are going from negative one to one half. Uh, we can tell that our max value happens, we went up and then we went down. So our max happens um, when x is negative 1, and the y value will be, and again, you're going for an ordered pair here, so uh, well, technically you're going for the max y value, but we'll just say where it happens. So if I plug in negative 1 into the original, because you're going for an ordered pair, I plug that in over here. If you plug in negative 1, you'll get 6. So plug it into the original, you'll get a max of, so the max y value is 6 when x equals negative 1. So if they just ask for one number for a maximum, they're looking for the y value. They're looking how high does it go. 
Um, but it's nice to have that ordered pair it's when we're going to plot later. Excellent. Uh, you can get the minimum here as well. So the minimum it went down then up, that's a minimum. So that ordered pair when x is a half, the y value, plug it into there, you'll get negative 3 fourths. So 1 half comma negative 3 fourths. So it has a min y value of negative 3 fourths when the x is a half. All right. So now we know all that, and basically you have the shape of your function right there. We're just going to flesh it out a little bit with this concavity. We're going to find an inflection point. So we do the same process again, just with the second derivative. So you have f double prime of x is derivative of this guy, so 24x plus 6. And I want to know, let's see, this is 6 times have to do this, but that's okay. So my uh, critical point for my second derivative is negative one-fourth. So that is where my second derivative equals zero. It's a potential point of inflection. So I plug in to see what my second derivative is doing uh, before and after this critical point. So if I plug in any number I want bigger than negative fourth into that, like a hundred or something, 24 times 100 is positive, plus 6 is positive. So I am concave up here. And uh, if I plug in anything less than negative a fourth, like negative 100, I will be negative. 24 times negative 100, negative plus 6. And so we are concave down here. So, awesome. So we can answer that. We're concave up from negative infinity to negative 1 fourth. So concave up from the x's between negative infinity and negative one-fourth, and concave down, oops, Whoop. I wrote that backwards, uh, concave down from negative infinity to negative one-fourth, and then concave up negative a fourth to infinity. And because it changed from going, changed concavity at this point, that point is my inflection point. So if I want to find that ordered pair of that point, if you want to find an ordered pair, an actual point on your graph, you plug it back into the original function. A lot of times I remember myself being confused when I was taking it. My teacher would be like annoyed. He's like, dude, you want to find an ordered pair? Put it back into there. Why would we put it back into one of those? I don't know. But uh, you put in zero and you get a one. So your inflection point is zero, one. So Awesome. So now we know all this stuff about our graph and we can use it to kind of uh, draw it. So we'll just plot what we've got. I like to plot my max and my min. So I've got a max at negative one six, a min at one half negative three fourths, um, and an inflection point at Zero, one. Hmm. Oops, why did I plot that there? One half, positive one half, negative three fourths. That's better. Uh, so that's, this is my max at negative one six. This is my min at a half negative three fourths. And then my inflection point is zero, one. And awesome. And so I know my shape basically looks like this. I'm going to go up till I reach my max, down till I reach my min, up. But I know that until this inflection point, I am uh, concave down. So I'm concave down till there. And then I switch to being concave up for there. And there we go. That is my graph.